till you die. You're an old man or old woman here, you got work to do. You got a young child, got a long life of work to do. You remember what Paul said to Timothy, young Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 12? Fight the fight of faith, Timothy, Timothy, and lay hold on eternal life. So that's the old man talking to the young man. Fight the fight of faith. Then 2 Timothy 4, 8, the old man signs off on his way to the grave. It's his last word. Last book he wrote, last word he wrote. Remember what he said? I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Now. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown. And he's dead. But until he's dead, he's fighting. There is no moving beyond the fight of faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's just not when you get saved. That's when you stay saved by the word of God. Don't think I just said you can lose your salvation. People always come to me when I talk like that. Oh, you must not believe that. We stay saved, but not without means. It's not automatic. It's the Word. It's this precious book. Let me close with an illustration. Noel and I have been married for 38 years. Two weeks ago, we had our 38th anniversary. We went away. Always go away, God willing. If the time worked. It's not on Christmas Eve or something. And uh, so we went away, had a you know, day and a half or so together. And we have a tradition in our anniversary away. We, we take the Bible, sit on a couch, either in the evening or in the morning of that day away, and we pick a passage of Scripture. Usually it's a little longer, like the whole book of Philippians or the whole book of Colossians, some shorter thing. This time we just chose 1 Corinthians 13. I wrote the star about it. You saw that already. And what we do is we read through it together out loud. Take turns. She reads a paragraph. I read a paragraph and back and forth. And then we pray through it praying about our lives, our children, our marriage, our church. And and we step back and we say, now how are we doing? How am I doing, Noel, on on this measuring rod of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not seek its own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. Love doesn't rejoice when wrong things happen. It rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never ends. How am I doing, Noel? And we said we would like the last chapter of our marriage could be a week, could be, I don't know, my dad's 87. Um, We want it to be the best chapter ever. And when we said that, we did not mean nicer stuff, longer vacations, more leisure, more play, fewer hardships, less work, less risk. I hate that vision of retirement. Sorry about that. What we meant was, here's my list. This is what I, John Piper, with my wife's help and the word, his work will work on. More humble, more kind, more patient, more empathetic. She made that suggestion. More empathetic. You know what that is, don't you? You stay inside your wife's skin. You feel what she feels. You say words that are appropriate to the moment. You don't pounce. You don't fix. You so you join them and join her in prayer about that. More tender-hearted, more expressive of affection. That's with this instrument right here, and more fruitful in witness and better that we would be better images of Christ. Now, here's, here's the reason it relates to this message. When we were done analyzing and assessing and wanting to be different people, 
than we are and have the last chapter be more that way? We asked, so how's that going to happen? We've been wanting these things for a long time. How's that going to happen? And we know it's going to be prayer, word, prayer, word, somehow or other. And so we assessed how we're doing with prayer, word as a couple. She doesn't know what I even do in my study over the Bible for an hour. She doesn't know. She's down there with her little computer program, Bible program, and I'm upstairs with my Bible open, and we don't even know what we're doing with each other. How are we doing together? And the answer was, I think we've fallen into some bad habits. Like, we used to kneel beside the bed about a year ago, and we've gradually crawled into bed to pray. Which means she's, she's, she really sleeps easy. I mean, she goes to bed really fast. I mean, really, she sleeps really fast. So by the time I'm done, <laughs> that's not a good pattern. So we've got a new plan. I won't go into details. Um, we got a new plan. And I said, Noel, what would you like to read? We need to read something together in, in here. And she said, I found, I found a book as I was doing research on all these missionaries called Daily Light for the Path that missionaries for generations have used. It's a cluster of Bible verses, and you can get it at Amazon. I ordered it day before yesterday. It cost 11 bucks. And, uh, and we're going to read st- Scripture for every day, not in bed. And then... Both going to pray. We're both going to pray. And I want her. I'm going to tell her, you prayed these for me. If she forgets, I'm going to remind her. You pray. Empathy, right? You want me to be empathetic. See, I, I can go to my study. I have for years. And pound on this proud heart and say, change. Lord, change me. Change me. But I think there will be more power if I humble myself before my wife and say, you pray that for me. Out loud, you pray that for me. And I'm going to do the same, whatever she invites me to do. I'm, don't, you don't preach at your wife by praying for her. You've got to be careful here. May she this and this. She's over there saying, Just talk, let's talk about that before you. I've learned a, a few things. It takes a long time. So, I'm done. I'm inviting you to join Noel and me. I'm inviting you to join Noel and me. So you're married or not married. doesn't matter you're man or woman. You're, you're old or young. I'm inviting you all into this fresh uh, encounter with this precious, powerful Word of God for your own soul, for your relationships, and for our difference in the world, and I hope that you will join us in whatever way God leads you. We're all different. We need different ways to read it. My wife is so different from me in how she reads the Bible, and I just want her to do it her way, and you do it your way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So grant that these friends here will live by the word of God. And that every day we will be in the word, meditating, memorizing. And where we're puzzled by the word, which we often are, keep us moving and you'll show us something that helps until the puzzle later on can be solved. So God grant, I pray, that our church would be saturated by the Bible. We don't throw these hyphenated words around lightly. A Bible-saturated, Christ-exalting church is, is not a throwaway phrase for us. So come and saturate your people with your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.